Good afternoon. It is currently five o'clock in New York City in Sugar's World. I have some New York Fashion Week events to go to tonight. I'm getting into drag. I'm doing a high fashion Cinderella look. So I figured might as well show you how to master the art of Disney princess makeup. So grab a snack, grab a coffee, and let's get glam with sugar. We have so much to get into today. I feel like my life has just been so crazy since landing in New York. There's a lot of drama I want to address. Also, I'm gonna be teaching you how to look like a Disney princess and really capture their beauty and youthful glow. So channeling princess energy isn't just about what you look like. Yes, I'm gonna be showing you the tips and tricks on how to look like a cartoon gorgeous fairy tale princess come to life in this video. But it's also important to remember that it's all about having princess energy. If you aren't cultivating and tapping into that playful, youthful, innocence inside of you, then you're not gonna glow on the outside. We can be applying highlighter all day, but it's like, no baby girl. We need to look inward and bring out that young kid that got so excited watching Cinderella and The Little Mermaid. Nothing better than a fresh Elmer's glue to start doing your brows. So I'm actually using myself as inspiration for today's Disney princess makeup look. Does that ever happen to you where you do makeup and it just came out so good and no matter what you do to recreate it, it just never ends up being as slay as the first time? This was the makeup I wore to the first day of Dragon last year. And honestly, it was just so princessy. And ever since then, I've been trying to recreate it. It just came out so princessy and ethereal and angelic. By the way, I love the word ethereal. That's the highest compliment I could give someone. Like, oh my God, you're ethereal. And I guess also calling someone Barbie, but we'll get into that drama with Trixie in a second. I should probably turn on this light. There we go. Do <laughs> y'all like my little setup? I got my Cinderella heels over here, some dolls over there, the wig I just dialed this morning. I just love being in my own little hotel room. I feel like Sweet Life is Zack and Cody and I'm gonna get like the little bell hanger or whatever the hell that is and just like zoom around. I guess while we're here, let's just address the Trixie Mattel drama. So in Spice and I's Valentine's Day gift exchange, we were talking about the doll challenge on Drag Race and how not many people had done dolls on Drag Race until us. And Spice was like, oh, well, you know, Trixie does Barbie. And I was like, I don't really get Barbie from her just because, you know, you're wearing blonde and pink. I don't really think that gives you the right to call yourself Barbie. I almost regret saying it because I never want it to come across as like me being a mean girl. <laughs> And I don't know, I was gonna delete it, but then I was like, you know what, this is my learning lesson. Sometimes I do experiments with the universe to see if I'm cut out for being like a person in the media. And ultimately it never sits right with me. And you know, you try to be like a quick shady drag queen and you know, it really was just light shade. I was like, no, I love her makeup. It's just, I wouldn't consider looking at that person as Barbie. I mean, I look at Margot Robbie and I'm like, that's Barbie. Cause to me, I always got more of a comedian cosplaying as a cartoon character. And for me, Barbie is an energy. It's that effervescent quality where you're doll-like and you have so much imagination. And I think just being a doll collector, I'm sure you relate if you're one as well. We're very detail-oriented people. So I don't know, like if someone's gonna be the life-size Barbie, like their makeup should be changing every day because Barbie always changes up her look. She's a versatile queen. And for me, I would never want her to see that on her feed and feel bad. Like I was trying to come for her Barbie spot and it's like, oh my God, Sugar and Trixie. It's like a one-sided feud right now. She has, probably hasn't even seen it. Basically, it was a learning lesson for me that I don't need to participate in drag queen shade and try to be someone that I'm not. It's like, let me just be in my own little sugar's world bubble and just spread the positivity and light that is coming from me. And it's like, no, I don't need to be shady to be entertaining. I have my people that love me for me and are into the same things that I am. And that's it. I don't, I've been on social media since 2016. I don't need to be doing clickbaity things like that. So Trixie, if you're watching, I'm sorry for saying you're not the life-size Barbie. <laughs> Um, you know, you're Barbie. If you're, you are whatever you want to be. And that's the lesson for everyone. It's like, if you call yourself something, then in your world, that's what you are. And no one can tell you 
How do you think different? And it was probably just so random to everyone, me randomly being shady to Trixie. But y'all don't know, I guess, the backstory of how me and Spice met her last year and it was a really negative experience. And I'm not even going to share it because, you know, drag queens, they're always having their off days, so we will let it slide. I hope she doesn't treat her fans the way she treated us. At the end of the day, we're all human and you can't expect someone to act the way you would if you were in their situation. So it is what it is. I always feel like a little puppy dog. I literally lick my Elmer's glue. I promise the brow video is coming. It's gonna be like four months from now. I'm like, girls, the brow video is coming. It's like, sugar, where is it? We've been waiting, hello. <laughs> I just have so much other ideas. So I need to act on my excitement right now. That's what I would challenge you to do wherever you're watching. If you're on the train, if you're at your mistress's house, if um, <laughs> you're waiting for your chopped salad to get to you, act on your excitement. If you don't feel like doing something, don't do it especially if it comes to your career or relationships. Go with what is exciting you the most and the rest will all unfold magically. You just have to trust in the universe. You have to let go. I think just as a doll collector, we get very girl boss, gatekeep, gaslight over like someone stepping into our territory. It's like, no, this was the thing I was like bullied for. Like now everyone else like loves Barbie. That was the thing about the Barbie movie this year. I'm like, Oh, so now the girls are into Barbie. Okay, where were you in fourth grade when I was fighting for my life? And I feel like that's such a real thing. As a young kid, you think no one else is into what you're into because it's not the popular thing at school. So me and Spice thought we were the only ones that were into dolls, which is fine. It definitely made us children of the internet. I need to do these brows. It definitely made us children of the internet because at a young age in elementary school, there weren't people around us in our physical life that had similar interests. So we found those people on the internet. And honestly, that was such a blessing because it was such an escape from a reality I did not want to subscribe to. And also it got me really good at learning media literacy. Me and Spice were the kids in fourth grade learning Photoshop and video editing. And we've been doing it for so long. So it really has helped us even in our drag career when it comes to just curating social media posts and videos and branding. So we have been doing this really since birth. So it really is a blessing in disguise that we didn't fit in from everyone else because ultimately, I always say ultimately, I love that word. Ultimately, it led to our successes. So that's good. So I just popped in my first blue circle lens and I really love this difference because I think it really shows how you can go from human to fairy tale, cartoon, gorgeous princess. This is going to do a lot of the work for you. It makes your eyes bigger so in turn it just makes you look so much cuter like a little baby, right? That's why we always think young newborns are so beautiful because they have those big doll-like eyes. Since getting to the city yesterday, it has just been go, 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 but I've been loving this change of pace. Well, actually, no, I've been very go, go, go since being in my new place. I think y'all can tell the work ethic has been jumping out, but it's not even, I'm like, oh my God, I'm working so much. I love this. No, I'm just following my joy and passion. I could, I could do this every day. I've really let go of all resistance when it comes to filming and creating content because of course this has always been my passion. But I think when I was starting out on Long Island, especially, there was just always so much dramas and traumas attached to getting ready. So I would almost like be scared to, you know? And I, there was like this conflicting energy of, oh my God, I love this, but uh, this is giving me so much stress and anxiety. But now I don't have that. So I'm like, oh my God, I never work a day in my life. This is just making me so happy. And it's just so fulfilling. So I challenge you to find the thing in your life that brings you joy, whether it's baking or pottery. <laughs> I like list everything that makes someone a lesbian. <laughs> Do you knit? Do you go to Home Depot? Well, that's just a, a stereotype. But your favorite thing to do is going to Home Depot, follow that passion. Maybe you're really into architecture and that's something that you can really invest in. It just makes all the difference because once you have that thing that is lighting your soul on fire, all the work is done. All your issues cease to exist because you're just living in that positive reality that you created for yourself and nothing can stop you. And that's how I feel about this YouTube channel. I'm sure you can relate to having short form content fatigue. I feel like TikTok has become empty calories when it comes to consuming content. I feel like you go on there, it's just a bunch of random people yelling and mad about something or 
I don't know, even though I've curated my feed to be spiritual and be more uplifting things, it does feel a little bit just like post it and go. And I'm at the point of being an artist where I want to create things that are meaningful. I want to connect. I'm sure you feel that radiating from me. And I feel like I have my own little home here. TikTok has become very clickbaity and people just doing things for views. And I'm at the point where been there, done that. I've had my viral moments. I've, I've done it all. And it really isn't as fulfilling as having a YouTube video that has 6,000 views, but we're popping off in the comments and we're connecting and there was actually value in the content itself compared to just doing something for views. And that's how I'm approaching this YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, I am going to finally just follow my passions. Like today, I'm like, it's not trendy to be Cinderella. There's no movie coming out, but I'm like, no, I'm going to be a cunty Cinderella because that's what's fueling me. I'm going to get back to my makeup in a second, but I feel like it's easier for me to be sugar if I'm not like multitasking. Y'all know I'm not a multitasking queen. It's okay. But what inspired this look today was actually my first video on this channel, technically, because the first one was exposing rude drag queens. And that was just a repurposed TikTok. And I was like, ooh, let me put this on here. But my first video that no one watched, but it's okay because, you know, you have to have like your early little moments. You have to have your humble beginnings. And basically, I was just really upset over watching Cinderella. And I was just like, oh my God, she had the evil eye on her. Her stepmother and ugly stepsisters were horrible to her. And they were just jealous of her youth and beauty. And, and I mentioned in that video, like one day I'm going to do a Cinderella look because I guess I just personally relate to her story. And... I thought that day wasn't gonna come because I'm always putting off my artistic endeavors. Oh, Spice is calling me. Girl, you're gonna have to wait a sec. But now I'm finally gonna be Cinderella in the city. I'm gonna have my little enchanted moment later. I'm gonna be popping out of the sewers and just, you know me, I love the juxtaposition of super glam in like a random environment. So that's gonna be tonight. <laughs> Last night was so much fun. I went out with Jaden, Marley, Spice, and then our friends Ellie and Gia Woods, who's a lesbian pop star. I love saying that. It's just like her little slogan. Gia Woods, the lesbian pop star. <laughs> her music is amazing. You need to check it out. She just dropped a music video for Your Engine. I'm obsessed. She's literally my top artist. Like y'all don't understand. This girl is about to blow up. So get into her music early on so you can say, oh no, I was here from day one. So I'm in New York for two more days and then me, Spice, Jaden, and Marley, it's like our little girls trip together. Then we're going to Miami. We're gonna be in the Airbnb. So that's gonna be my next video and my next look. I'm just obsessed. So stay tuned for that. Me and Malaysia, we're gonna film a Get Glam together and we're gonna be spilling all the tea, addressing all of the dramas and dramas. So, so much to look forward to. And when I tell you guys, I got so drunk. I don't want to, I don't even want to say it because monetization last night. And yeah, not again because, well, no, it was fun. And I was, you know, I had to let loose, if you will. Hey, Lucy girl. But I'm definitely not going to do that again. I know I said that on my last video. I'm like, I drank for the first time in a minute and I'm not going to do it again. But I definitely learned my lesson now. Just, I mean, I'm definitely a fun person when I'm lit up, if you will. So it's not like I'm like this angry. Like, you know how people turn into like these angry people on drama and all that. No, I'm just like in my own corner, living in my own world. But I hate feeling like I can't be productive in the morning. Like I literally slept until 11 this morning. And I, well, I guess that's the time difference from LA. But still, I like to be up and, you know... I am on this trip to do this. Like, yes, it's fun to do all of the New York Fashion Week stuff. And then in Miami, we're going to see Malaysia at the Palace, which is an iconic drag spot. If you're in Miami, you definitely have to go. So we're going to have a drag brunch and all that. And that's great. But ultimately, my favorite word, <laughs> this is my everything. Just doing drag and creating art. And Gia's friend at dinner last night, we were at this place called Carbone. I'm going to insert the footage here. It was iconic. We had the rigatoni and the chicken barn but their friend said such an iconic quote i literally stopped her i was like hold on i gotta write that down in my notes i have a little thing that says sugar the prophet and i put down all my inspirational stuff so let me see if i can remember it we were talking about affirmations and i was like oh are there any things you tell yourself whenever you're feeling down or worried she said oh i always tell myself in times of stress i have more than enough time and more than enough energy to do whatever my heart desires and I've been using that all day. I went on my little walk before this and I know both I wasn't feeling stressed, but 
you know, with time schedules and Spice has to meet me soon to bring me to Times Square. Well, she's not bringing me, we're going together to shoot the content, but then she has a dinner. So you had to pan it all out. So you almost kind of start to get nervous. Like, am I going to be able to get done in time? Am I going to be able to do all my stuff? And then I was like, no, I have more than enough time and more than enough energy to do whatever my heart desires. And I love that because it reminds you that there's no rush. I think as vibrational beings living in a physical world, sometimes we can be living in the physical world too much and the daily stresses can get to us. But it's like, no, we have all the time in the world. There's no rush. We're not going anywhere. And once you realize that we are just limitless beings for all of eternity, like our souls, we're here. We're energy. So once we're done with playing in the physical realm of being on Earth, we're going to be up in the nether regions like, okay, what's my next adventure? Am I going to go into space? Am I going to reincarnate as a twig or a branch or a tree? So that really calms me knowing, okay, like I know that I'm safe when I'm done being on this planet Earth. So I think this is probably making no sense. It's just all of, you know... I hope I'm attracting my spiritual girlies. And if you're not, I hope I can teach you and, you know, bring you to the light. Going in with my Tarte Shape Tape as usual. But let me know in the comments who your favorite Disney princess is. I'm so curious. Y'all know me. My favorite is Belle, of course. But I have a love for all the princesses. I think after my Cinderella look, I'm really inspired to do an Alice in Wonderland look, a Sugar in Wonderland, because I also really relate to her. And I just love the story. I think Alice, well, I'll, we'll save that for the Alice video. But don't you feel like Disney movies hit so much different when you're grown up? Because it, the plot and the themes and the morals of the story almost go over your head as a kid because you're like, look at Ariel's tail. She's so pretty. I want red hair. But then you grow up and you're like, oh my gosh, Ariel. She represented the outcast and she wanted to fit in. She wanted to have her legs, but she had a gift and then Ursula was trying to steal it from her. It wasn't her voice Ursula was trying to steal. It was that radiating light from her. I think Disney movies always nail that aspect of kind of taking real life themes and disguising them as an exciting, fun, adventurous movie. But underneath it all, there's a message. I think the message of Cinderella is hard work and kindness and staying true to yourself always pays off. The stepsisters and stepmothers really disguised their jealousy of Cinderella as, oh no, she's nothing, she's a flop, she has to stay in all day and clean our dishes and they literally treated her as a servant, I mean, she was. I think the best part about Cinderella as a character is that she didn't let their negative beliefs of her get to her. She didn't let that affect her self image. And I think that's something we can all relate to. There's always going to be someone in our life that probably doesn't think of us that highly. Well, actually, no, they think of us highly, but they treat us badly because they want what you have. And that was the case with Cinderella, but they didn't let her know that. They weren't like, oh, we're treating you poorly because you're beautiful and you have this light of radiance and you have this amazing energy to you and the prince wants you right when you walk in it's like they're never going to say that because they're not even self-aware enough to realize that's why they don't like her they're just like oh my god she's always in our way she's it's like no you just want to be cinderella you can admit it it's okay but how about instead of treating her poorly join her it's like whenever i see someone that inspires me and i look up to or they have a quality that i want to possess one day I like to invest into them. I'm like, hey, let me learn from them. Whenever an inch of jealousy comes up in me, I always look at that as inspiration. I'm like, oh wow, that person has something that I want. That's proof that it can happen for me. The best thing to do if envy or jealousy comes up inside of you is to use it as motivation and inspiration. For eyebrows, I'm using the Morphe Dip Brow. What shade is she? She's Biscotti. I love a cool tone brow. Well, no, that's a lie. I hate gray eyebrows. I guess it depends with the look. Sometimes you want warm or cool tone. For achieving princess-like makeup, I would suggest going for a softer brow. You don't want a harsh 2016 moment where it's like that block brow. Definitely go more light with this. I think it's important when you're doing your makeup to constantly tell yourself 
what is your end goal with the look while you do it? Because if you don't have that figured out before you even start your makeup, it's probably not gonna turn out the way you want to because you don't even know how you want it to turn out. It's also really good to have a reference photo. I'm literally using myself as reference because I'm like, oh wait, let me go back to that. Does that ever happen where you look back at old photos of yourself and you're like, oh my God, like I'm my inspiration. I'm about to make me my home screen. Even though that's a little cringy, it's like, mm. that's what I've been battling with with my place because I want to hang up artwork of sugar that y'all have made of me, but I don't want it to be like, conceited right like i feel like it's almost cringe but i'm like no all the icons have photos of them hanging up in their house like paris and trisha and kim i saw a kim kardashian i saw a tiktok of her and in her bathroom it was all of her not movie posters girls not a movie star her magazine covers or even rupaul he had his magazine covers in his bathroom so why can't that be me come on it's not like it's photos of me hanging up it's my favorite doll sugar that's hanging up so let me appreciate her once i get back to la hopefully i'll have the paintings from my favorite artist ready to hang up so my new setup will be super cute but you know timing i'm not rushing my place is definitely coming together but you know it's a process it's a journey why wish it away because it's all about the fun along the way you know so a quick little sugar eyebrow tip after you carve out the bottom with the concealer there's going to be differences right so right now this brow it's thicker on the top now that i lined up the bottom to be even i'm going to go back in with the dip brow and kind of build up this brow more so it matches because you always want them to be at least on the same playing field, you know, where they start. It's definitely a learning process with the brows and you're gonna figure out what you like best. My best advice is just practice, practice, practice. I was honestly always good at makeup. It was definitely a natural gift for me. It was the artist's eye, if you will. But in the beginning, I did have hangups because I wasn't able to practice that much because honestly, it was just scary to do drag in that house, you know what I mean? But now that I've been, you know, doing my makeup so much more, and especially last year, that was such a positive thing about doing Drag Race and doing the clubbing circuit because it got Spice and I so quick at our makeup because, you know, now it wasn't, oh, we can have all day to get ready because if you give yourself all day, it's going to take all day. That's what I learned. It was, oh no, we have to be out because we're going to miss the gig. So you learn your quick, pretty face. One of the queens in Australia, she taught me that. She was like, you know, you need to master your quick, pretty face, the QPF, that's what she called it, quick, pretty face. It's not like your art, it's not being groundbreaking, but you know, you throw on your smoke, you throw on your lash and you go because the gays in the club, they don't care. Like I always say, they're looking for their D in the corner. They don't care about your cut crease. But in Sugar's world, we care about the country. This brow looks crazy. I need to fix these. We'll be back. Now, an important step when you are setting that brow down is to dip into your powder, take off the excess, of course, and then when you tap, you are going to lift up. You don't want to just slide it across because you are going to move all that product. You just spent almost an hour slaying down and getting even. We don't want to do that. So just tap and then lift. Go back into your powder. Trust me, it is worth it to go the extra mile and take your time. I think a lot of drag queens, they wear, I do my makeup really fast, proudly on their sleeve. That's their whole thing. Like, oh my God, I do my mug in 45 minutes. And it's like, we can tell. <laughs> but also just say you don't like drag and go. My favorite part about drag is getting into drag. That's why it's fun for me. I feel like for most drag queens, it's more of a... I'm not gonna group everyone because obviously everyone's different, but from what I've seen or what I can tell what's lying underneath is when drag queens say, oh, girl, I do my makeup in 30 minutes. And you know, they look down at other people that take long to do their makeup. It's like, okay, well maybe this is more of an attention seeking thing for you. You wanna throw it on so you can go to the club and get your quick dopamine hit of people telling you you're pretty instead of actually investing in your art and doing something that makes you happy because an artist, they're gonna take all day to perfect their canvas if they can, if they're really into it. So that's how I've always viewed it. I actually don't think it's a big flex to be promoting that you take really short to do your makeup. But also why do you care if it takes someone long to do their makeup as long as it's not affecting you? I mean, half the time, I'm not going to any gigs. I'm just like on my own time schedule. So it doesn't even matter. But yeah, I mean, you should do your makeup quick so you don't hold up other people's time. That's a valid point, but.
Y'all get what I'm saying. Okay, I just finished my base. When it comes to looking really youthful and angelic, it is all about the skin. Something I've done recently that has changed the game is applying less powder. I actually use this puff. Y'all have seen me use this in a few videos, but it's made my skin so much better. I used to think I had to kick on so much powder, I think because I was watching those drag queen tutorials, but then once you become a self-taught goddess and actually experiment and see what works for your own face instead of following someone else's tutorial and what works for them, that's when you have true success with your makeup. So I just went in with my puff and I like, like literally the tiniest bit of powder. And that's, this is my bake. Like, I used to have a bright white under eye, and honestly, it wasn't good because it just took hours wiping it away, and then you have flashback, and then it's dry and cakey, and it might look good on stage, but we want to look good in person too, okay? I don't want to promote any catfishing. We should be looking flawless and photoshopped in person too. So that's been game changing. I'm going to go in with my eyes. I'm going to start my eyes. I'm using the OG Modern Renaissance Anastasia palette. I'd live for this stuff. What are the pop-in eyeshadow palettes? Are there really even eyeshadow palettes that have hype right now? Because I would love to try them. We're going in with a burnt orange. Oh, that's literally the shade name, burnt orange. Love that. And this is kind of going to be our only eyeshadow work. Just watch. So basically, we're just going to lay her down as a transition. If you're blocking a brow, still do where your actual crease is because we're going to follow our natural eye for this. This look isn't all about creating new shapes. This is about taking the features you have and just making them bright and youthful. This is a soft glam look. It definitely is. Y'all know me. I love my clown moments. I love to look uh, like I'm stamped on, but this is cartoon realism. That's what we're going for here. One of my tips when it comes to eyeshadow is always start with less because you can always add in more. I used to have that issue where I would take so much powder and you plop it on and then you're blending for hours and you kind of screwed it up, right? So build. It's all about building. So normally I would go in with shadow first and do my shadow work before liner, but we're not doing that today because doing liner first will actually help us see where we're going to put that shadow placement. I'm using the one size point made liner. She is sickening. I love to say drag terms sarcastically. Like all I say now is sickening, sickening. She's sickening. You make fun of it and then slowly you turn into it and it becomes part of your five word vocab. So we're dealing with it. How far out you want to draw your liner is up to you. When it comes to drag makeup and creating new features, it feels scary to draw your eyeliner literally back to where your hairline starts, but it will definitely give you a bigger impact once your makeup is all done. There have been times where I haven't drawn out my eyeliner that far. And again, this is my face shape. So, you know, only take this advice if it applies. But for me, it was making my eyes look too close together if like my liner wasn't filling up this plane of my face. Almost forgot we need to add glitter. This is very real. Sometimes you have to just go back. Normally I would apply the eyeliner after, but it's okay. So I use the Anastasia loose glitters. I think they're great. They're eye safe and they make everything. Why is Spice sexing me? <laughs> so we're just going to pop her in. This really gives you that fairy tale like, oh wow. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it is giving that glow, baby. If this is also great just to set that crease because if you don't, then the glitter is gonna be transferring onto the eyeliner and we don't want that. That's really one of my biggest pet peeves when you have the lash, but then it's not fully black because the cut crease is transferring. No, 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 not in Sugar's World. We don't, that's not an issue for us. Look at the difference the liner makes, but we're not stopping here because from far away, this wouldn't just give you the effect that you want because this is supposed to be soft and romantic. So going back into that palette, I'm using a darker brown shade and we are going to blend up because having a male skeleton, if, like if I didn't have this lighting right now, it would just be brow bone. It'd be very heavy. Like you'd actually see my bones. And as drag queens, as humans, as people, we want to look good when we don't have a ring light on us. So this is what's going to get you to be unclockable, basically. So just take that brown and now we are going to pack and just slightly blend up and drag out. See, this wouldn't be good to do with a black because it would just be too harsh, right? So this is kind of that perfect medium i close my eye and really get in there because otherwise it won't look pretty when you close your eyes and you want to have pretty eyes when you close them and this really does all the work so don't stress about your eyeliner having to look 
too, too perfect. This isn't really an eyeshadow based look. And that always kind of gets me because I'm like, oh my God, it's not really giving that much delay. So you're gonna have to wait until the lash is on because that's gonna give you your princess glory and really have that wow moment. All right, now we're gonna do some under eye work. I'm going back in with that bigger fluffy brush and we are going to marry that burnt orange shade underneath. I am just having so much fun today waking up in New York City. It was snowing. And y'all know I grew up on Long Island in New York. So I just feel like I'm at home. It was just so magical, even though I kind of woke up in a flurry. Is that the right word? Oh, I like that. I woke up in a flurry because I'm like, oh my God, I have so much to do. I gotta get my feelings set up. I have my uh, travel makeup kit, which I'm obsessed with. I'm gonna try to find the link to it and put it in my bio just so you guys can get one yourself because it's like game changing. It's keeping me so organized. And I feel like I can travel the world now. I can take Sugar Gets Glam on the road, which I guess I am doing. But imagine me like in Tokyo, Japan, just like Sugar Gets Glam in Tokyo, which would be sickening. I have been in my K-pop era. I'm obsessed with Girls' Generation. I've been bopping to their music on my hot girl walks. So yeah. Uh, Tokyo, kawaii, sugar moment needs to happen. I feel like my girls would get me there, you know, and I would just be like Barbie brought to life. I always think of that one image of Barbie with the bangs. It just gives so Tokyo Barbie, which I love. I'm also planning a Hello Kitty look soon. I feel like a lot of girls do Hello Kitty. Well, not really, but no one's done anything until Miss Sugar's done it. I mean, that's what you got to tell yourself because at the end of the day, everything's been done before, but as an artist, we haven't seen your take yet. So don't be discouraged if something is popular to do that I always kind of battle with that. Cause I'm like, well, I don't want to be basic like everyone and their mom's doing a Hello Kitty look, which actually they aren't. But well, I just think the Drag Race fans, they be like, oh my God, it's giving Violet. And it's like, no, I just want to give Hello Kitty in peace and not reference any drag queen. And that's a conversation for another day with, you know, when the new cast get drops for Drag Race and everyone's like, oh, it's giving Aquaria and Raja. Or like, it's just like, how about people are people? But I understand why people do that. It's only right to make comparisons. As people, we like to label things and categorize things. That's how our brain operates. So you can't really get too mad at it. It's like, oh, this is reminding me of something. And actually, that's a good thing. You want people to think when they see your drag or when they see your art. But going back to my whole point, it was so cute because I was styling my wig, which was super fun, even though that used to give me stress. But now I'm like, stress-free in sugar's world. So that was cute. And I got my little chopped salad and that was fun because it's like, ooh, look at me being all healthy. And But now I look at food differently. I'm gonna get to this in my, how I overcame my binge eating disorder very soon. I'm feeling more comfortable uh, now that I'm kind of doing this like multiple times a week. I feel like I'll be able to be really vulnerable because that there's a lot of darkness that I had to overcome when it comes to my eating, so. Stay tuned. <laughs> These are the makeup tips no one talks about. I just went in with a darker brown shade and built out my outer lower waterline. And I also put it back up onto the top. So do you see how it's really kind of bringing back my brow bone? And this is also kind of swooping it up. It's honestly easier once you do the bottom to then do the top. But this is where it really all comes together. So don't be afraid to really blend uh, no one has looked bad with too much under eye smoke, okay? So when in doubt, just add more. Now this is a really life-changing hack to giving princess makeup. Take a white powder and we are going to pop it on the bottom waterline right in the center. So I'm gonna do one side so you can see the difference. But wow, it really kind of brightens up because you really want to look awake and lively, you know? Can I open up this blush? This is the Too Faced Cloud Crush in Golden Hour, the warmer tone one. <laughs> I really want to get the one size one because I know he just came out. Uh, Patrick just dropped some new blushes, so I definitely have to try those. But I finally come to terms with the fact that putting on blush is my favorite step of the makeup process. You know, I was battling with a lot of different steps. I thought it was doing the eyebrow hairs or doing under eye smoke or putting on a lip. Actually, no, lips are kind of annoying to me. But the blush, it just makes such a difference for me. And especially going for that younger, more youthful look. I know you're like, girl, you're 25. Why are you trying to talk about younger? But I'm talking to all my sugar girls, peeps. You're probably not my age. You're probably younger or older. So I got to give the tips. But also, if you're young, why not look young? You can still be doing makeup that makes you look older. That's why they always say Gen Z just looks so much older than they actually are. Because, well, I really feel like 
Putting on a lot of makeup is not the trend at the moment. It's very the clean girl aesthetic, which obviously I'm a drag queen, I'm not here for. But as much as things swing to one side of the pendulum, they're gonna swing back around. So I really do feel like 2024 is gonna be the year of the glam girl. I feel like 2016, everyone thought of that as glam makeup, but that was just badly done glam makeup, no. It was just too much in certain areas. So when it comes to makeup trends, I hate trends, I don't follow them because I feel like when it comes to actually having longevity, it's like, girl. But I definitely think it's all about the blend of having that clean, gorgeous skin, but you know, a little bit of glam, come on. Like what? But I feel like the girls that can get away with the clean girl aesthetic, they're already naturally beautiful. So it really is a scam anyway. It's like, let's just cake on the makeup and go, okay? Whenever I curl my lashes, I always get a crab in my hand. Ooh, but I'm trying out the new YSL mascara. What is she called? Ooh, um, this is the Lash Clash Waterproof. Ooh, save that five times fashion. Lash Clash. Clash, I can't even say it. My day list, it's like, girl. I love how it's black and blue. I always say sugar is light pink or lavender, and then Boy Cooper is light blue. It's just, it's just the way the world works. Let's see what she's giving. I'm obsessed with saying, let's get into what she's giving. That's a spice quote, and I just always say it now. But I did see in my last video that a lot of, well, not a lot of y'all, I saw a few of you kind of asking me to talk about how to cultivate an inner self-confidence. And I always say self-confidence always stems from self-acceptance. The reason why someone would go about this world not being confident is because you aren't accepting your flaws, if you will. But once you realize your flaws are actually your greatest assets in disguise, that's when you're unstoppable. Like for example, growing up, I hated my neck. I thought it was too feminine, it was too skinny, and all the guys in my school, they had these big necks. And I remember I would literally like edit my photos to have a bigger neck. But now I'm so happy. I, well, you can't get surgery, I guess, to have a bigger neck. And I would literally be on YouTube searching how to like make your neck bigger. And I just thought it made me look so, I don't know, also that era was very much me trying to fit in, you know, in high school. And, and you realize you don't really have value as a guy unless you're muscly, you know, or big. And I was the opposite of that. So that was definitely something I was so insecure about. And I just felt like I was so frail and skinny. But once I finally accepted my body type and just, you know, my twink behavior, that's when I got true confidence. Cause I'm like, you know what? There's no changing me. Let me just emphasize who I already am. And that's when I finally walked out of the house and had confidence. It wasn't until I looked in the mirror and said, there's no changing this. So let me just embrace it. And once you actually embrace yourself, that's when people aren't picking up on your insecurities. And you never wanna be the girl that's projecting all their insecurities onto everyone and constantly needing validation and reassurance that you're pretty and beautiful and all this stuff. So it all has to come inside. All the answers are inside, nothing is outside of you. So hopefully that helps. Big fan of the mascara, it slayed me down, especially for the bottom lash, very full and voluminous. I'm now just gonna go back in with that one size eyeliner and I, emphasize some lashes. Instead of putting on falsies on the bottom, I just do this. I feel like it's quicker and more effective. I do play with the falsies on the bottom. Spice is more into that and she yells at me. She's like, do them, they look so good. But I don't know. I feel like I struggle with getting them laid down right and this gives the same illusion but gets the job done quicker. So yeah, draw on those little lashes. This will definitely make you look cartoon-like in the best way. Recently, I've just been doing my same lip combo. I go in with the MAC Boldly Bare pencil. I need to get a sharpener, so that's gonna be a journey tomorrow because she's getting dull. And then my Krylon, what shade is she? You think I would know it by now, Miss Latin. I feel like if you have a good lip combo, don't mess it up. If it's not, uh, don't fix it. I'm not really adventurous when it comes to my lipstick shades. That's definitely Spice's journey. Oh my God, I've never done a red lip. Cause I'm like that spices thing. So I'm kind of nervous to do a red lip. And also I don't really feel like it would look good on me, but maybe one day, I feel like this channel will get me out of my shell makeup wise, but that's kind of life in general. Like how will you know what you like if you don't even try it? That's like me being a picky eater when I was younger. I was very much the chicken fingers and butter pasta kind of girl, even though now that's not even in my diet, but it's like be adventurous because on the other side of fear is you're limitless potential. The power of a lash, people, look at that. This is really 
bringing it up and elongating. So never underestimate the power of gluing hairs onto your eyeballs, right? I'm using the Lemonhead glitters for my cheekbone highlight like I did in my Valentine's Get Ready With Me. And I am using a different shade. What shade is she? Okay, she is adult film. Ooh, but this is really impactful. The one I used in the last episode of Sugar Gets Glam was more of a pink hue, but this is really giving me that Cinderella glow. Look at that. That is crazy. I love this because it's not dark on the cheeks when you turn your head forward because a lot of highlighters, they can look great like that, but then when you look forward, it looks like dark soot. So this is Sugar Approved. Bam. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed with this. Oh my God, hi, Lemonhead. You want to sponsor me? I got these random gems at the beauty supply. There's literally a Sally's right across my hotel. So let's put these on. A good technique is getting these little clipper things. I don't even know. I guess they're just like tweezers, honestly. And we're going to pop these suckers on. See, look how easy that is. Oh my gosh. I used to spend hours trying to get gems on my face when Spice and I first started drag because we, you know, we wanted to be popping, but we didn't really know the right way to do it. And this is, it just makes life so much easier. Look at that, oh my God. So quick and easy. And I really am about like how it feels doing the makeup now, you know? It's like, I want to have fun every step of my makeup. I don't want to dread doing something because the process is the best part. Spice is on the way over to me. She's gonna be going out after she helps me. So she's like, okay, girl, well, let me let me get myself together because she's gonna be in drag tomorrow. So I'll be helping her shoot. So I love the twin assistant drag duos jumping out. It's like, no one is gonna help you more than a drag queen because they know all of the little things. And honestly, we're each other's like drag moms, really. Like, and I don't take it personally anymore when, you know, somebody's like, fix your lace or this or that. Cause it's like, that's how we got so good by <laughs> coming for each other. No, but we're very honest with ourselves. I'm sure, I don't know if you would know that by consuming what we put out, but we are very honest people, as delusional as we are to other people, we're secretly very, very self aware. So we, you know, we're real. I'm not going to delude myself into being like, oh girl, your boot contour was good when it wasn't. Because how else are you going to grow? If you want to grow as an artist or anything in your life, you have to be honest because honesty is the best part of what is this, like kindergarten? Okay, so boot contour is done. We put on the earrings. I'm trying not to get my nipples because I know YouTube will think I'm presenting as a woman and it's like, girl, you're flashing everyone. So we're going to throw her on in the back. I know Secret does this hack now where you put the second wig underneath for more bundles, but I don't know if this is like a common thing nowadays. And I just pin it in just for some safety in case she's sliding everywhere. But I really don't have hair, so um, it's kind of hard to like grip it into your scalp. But let's put on my top wig. Now I am going to be wearing a headband with this. So that is always a nightmare to do because you have to weave. Okay. Well, first I should probably apply got to be. So I use got to be to slay down my wigs. Ooh, I'm kind of running low on this. That's lovely. Ooh. Oh no, she's sliding back. This could be a mess. This is always the make or break it moment because if your wig isn't glued down right, it could ruin all the time you just spend on your makeup. Okay. I don't know why people don't talk about like how hard it is to slay down your wig right, you know? Like why aren't the girls talking about this? Okay, now we gotta pull her. It's like so much wig work. Okay, I think I got this good. You always wanna reach into the back and make sure your wig is actually like covering your head. You don't want it just to be floating on the top, you know? Oh my God, she's sickening. So I have this little bam we're gonna put in to get that Cinderella moment. I'm gonna do this off camera because Lord knows it's gonna take too long. I can't show myself because <laughs> the ninnies are out, but Spicy Kins is here. She's gonna put on my corset for me. I don't know what I'm doing. But... Well, you look, 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 look right here, look. Okay. You just pull these two. It's the oh, ones yeah, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, girl, what? You wear these every day. I'm so excited for this. I'm literally about to go out with my friends. We're in New York for Fashion Week. We're gonna Troll well, they know, about. they know. Oh, it, it, we're already like 40 minutes into the video. Uh, <laughs> I'm just excited because I'm like, this is going to be my most fun moment of the night. Oh my. <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't tried this on yet because 
my god. Oh my god. Oh this my way, god. I'm sorry. This look, the secret's out with this look. The secret, I mean, the it's, been out. Out. The, it's been out that you're a superstar. But the secret that you're the high fashion, comfy, fashionable fantasy doll. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't feel bad about saying I'm the Barbie over Trixie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we always say that. We're like, oh, but this look, the secret's gonna be out that we're cunty. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no one knows yet until this look comes out. Well, I always say you're only as good as your last That's look. look. Right. Okay, lace her up. <laughs> don't tell that to a bunch of these booger drag queens. <laughs> They're up. Well, not booger drag queens, just half ass drag queens, you know. Well, that's that very. Don't well, that's very much a trend. I think a lot of girls go on Drag Race and then they just get lazy. They but these they, girls, they these expose girls themselves yes. because they only did drag for Drag Race. Right. It's like, and then they what? wait until maybe All Stars and then they do their package to show. It's like, girl, be cunty now. Like, you don't have to spend $10,000 well, on a package to be cunty. Like. No, they only do it to compete on a TV show right. to fuel their ego because without outside accolades, then they feel like they're worthless. And that is honestly so devastating. Right. But I feel like it's very common in the queer community. Well, no, just in general, a lot of people look for outside... Right. Okay, just slide as a thing. Yeah. People look for outside... Um, validation. Validation. Well, a lot of... Even with art, even with me doing my music and stuff, like with any art I do, it's like, no, you have to do it for yourself. You have to do it even, I would still do music, I would still do drag if nobody even saw it. Like I would literally, I have to for me, right. it's literally your expression, it's how you get it out. So at the moment you start doing things for validation and praise or just, it's so fleeting, it's really not gonna be good for your mental health because once you get that attention, it's gonna come just as Quick as it left, so it's just not gonna, right. you're just gonna really it's... not be happy. She's getting laced up. I like when Spice laces up my corsets because normally she's yelling at me, she's like, girl, you gotta cinch more. I'm like, okay, drag mom. So now, like, yeah, you can't be drag. mad. Okay, okay, pull her in. Okay. Look at that. Let's see. I barely ate yesterday because Wait, of why? the flight, so I feel like this will close, right? <laughs> well, we're like such horrible influences. I know, but like, don't happen. eat. <laughs> no, it's giving very like y Yolanda and like Gigi Hadid when she was in a photo shoot. And then she was like, Mom, I'm hungry. And then Yolanda was like, Have a couple, one, two, three. Have a couple of almonds and chew them very slowly. Well, okay. you messed that one up, but okay. okay. Oh my god, she's coming. Let's show the sickening Ooh. cinch. Are, uh, okay. Are they gonna be what is it when it's like, da 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 Girl, if you don't okay. tighten this, we tight it. Make it tighter. Well, no, j j tie the bow, tuck it in, and let's go. Are you Dr. Seuss? Well, yes, I'm always Dr. Seuss. <laughs> That's your next look, high fashion, comfy Dr. Seuss. Honestly, it would kind of be a give. Ooh, like a really feline. It would kind of be like, the Give Veronica Marie. The Give Veronica Marie, yes, me. Normally it's Give Anna, but the Give Veronica. The Give Veronica. Okay, should we show them what it looks like in the back? Okay. So we They're tried our best to close them very well. We're gonna put on the rest of the look and I'll see you in Times Square. Mm -hmm. Here is what the fit is giving. I have my glass slippers in question that I'm gonna be putting on. A little nail cam moment, get into the details, baby. I'm obsessed with this choker moment. I really wanted to emphasize Cinderella choker, but make it more fashion-y. This is actually a Versace reference. So I'm living for the fantasy. I even have a little panty right there in case it blows up in Times Square. <laughs> we made it to Times Square. I am freezing my nipples off. You probably can't even hear me. I'm gonna add subtitles. I've been walking around. I need a hot dog. Get into her, Miss Sugar. Girl, this go wasn't glamorous. I'm going to wear a gloss. I'm gonna go film my Insta videos and all that. Bye. Wait, bring your hair to the front again. Bring your hair to the front. Ready? And that's a wrap on Sugar Gets Glam. Oops. <laughs>